I hear the Lord now say, let that go, forgive. Yeah. Like you can't, I've forgiven you of this much. How can, you can't forgive of that. Right. And so now it's just, I'm able to forgive truly because of that helmet of salvation, because of that, it just sets you free, you know? And it's just this deep gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's amazing. You know, I remember when God gave me a dream of being a mom. I was 21 and so much had happened in my 21 years of age um, Mm -hmm. of living and probably enough life for like a 60 year old, honestly. It was just a lot, but it was an image of me. I was sitting down, there was a field and I was leading a little bit close to, I guess who would be my husband. And there were um, kids um, running in the field. I couldn't see their faces, but I can just see their back, their um, their heads. And I remember um, thinking, oh my goodness, this is such a great picture. I'm like, God, why, you, what is this? He's like, yeah. that's you, Zai. And I remember just crying because it was such a pretty picture mm. and it was me as mom, husband mm. and my kids. And I'm like, wow, that looks like a dream. And where I'm at right now, I don't know if that'll ever be, but yeah. yes, God. Um, a couple of actually months later, I would meet my dream guy. Mm. <laughs> and sometime later we'd get married and, you know, we get married and um, I had this dream in my face and I'm like, Stephen, hope you're ready because <laughs> <laughs> they're on the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to get this show moving. <laughs> and he was like, whoa, okay. There was a lot happening. Uh, we were leading a church, almost like a church plant type situation. There was a lot going on. And um, he was like, here's a puppy. And I'm like, (laughs) that wasn't in the dream, (laughs) but it worked. It worked. I was obsessed with the puppy for a little bit, probably about six months. I'm like, no, I think I want that picture. I want that image that God gave me. He gave it to me. And so um, a little bit later, we would um, agree on a time. So um, we start um, practicing to have a kid. And I got to tell you, every time (laughs) practicing, it was so much fun. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) So we start practicing to have a kid. He wanted it. I wanted it. It was great. And I'm like, okay, you were unified. We're going to get pregnant right away. Right, right. Month came in. I swear, every time a month came in and I wasn't pregnant, I'm like devastated. Right. And then insert a little bit of the fear. Mm -hmm. Whoa, am I going to get pregnant? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it yeah. possible? Yeah. Like is, but God, this is torture because you gave me that dream. And am I, uh, am I barren? Like what's going on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another month, another month, finally did get pregnant. And that's when it was like an onslaught of just all these different mind games. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm pregnant. Yes, I'm pregnant. And the enemy is just like, yeah, but probably going to have a miscarriage mm-hmm. because the fetus is mm-hmm. not even viable until like, you know, after the first trimester and like mm-hmm. all these different thoughts. When I turned on TV, there was something about someone that had a miscarriage mm-hmm. on yeah. some show, some random show, or that um, there was some type of crazy illness that the child had. I'll go on social media and there was something else, some type of crazy thing was online on, I'm, I'm Googling all the symptoms that I feel like I'm having. Yeah. And of course it's all bad when yeah. you Google stuff. And right. so just thoughts after thoughts after thoughts, it'd be, um, and when you go for your checkups and stuff and I'm like, yeah. wow, this is the day they're not going to have a heartbeat. Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh my wow. goodness. The yeah. thoughts. And then I'm like, I'm a pastor. Yeah. What is going on yeah. with me? Right. And I'm like, God, like, what am I, like, what is going on? I had no, my world was literally spinning. I was losing my mind. I felt even more shame. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm getting sad at all the thoughts that I'm thinking. What if I pass to add this to my baby? When I tell you, it was one thing after another, after another, after another, my God, help me. Yeah. Like this is, there's something wrong. And again, there's a whole, I'm thinking these dark thoughts that I can't share with anybody else yeah, yeah. because if I share them, then they right. know it's real. And then it will yeah. start looking at me funny. So maybe keep it in my head and I'll try to figure it out. But I wasn't figuring it out. Right. I said, God, please help me. Yeah. Give me a word. Not just everything works together for good. I know yeah. that, but give me right. an on-time word for right now. Yeah. What I'm feeling, please, please. Cause I feel like I'm about to lose this baby. I was reading my Bible and um, just regular Bible reading. And he brought me to um, Exodus um, 23, verse 25 and 26. And if I read it now, it's not because I'm sad, but it's just because of how good and how kind Mm, he was. It says, worship the Lord your God and his Mm. blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. 
and none will miscarry and be barren in your mm. land. Mm-hmm. I will give you a full wow. lifespan. Beautiful. Mm. Y'all, I wow. read this and it jumped out at me and it slapped me in the face and it yeah. said, this is for you. <laughs> and from then on, when thoughts, because thoughts mm-hmm. still came, but this word, yeah. it just studied my mind. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. just, I was like, okay, no. Yeah. No, I'm not going to miscarry. So good. I'm not yeah. going to be barren, not just for me, but for my church. Like I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm worshiping the Lord. I'm being set apart. Like I'm, this was for me. And when I tell you, it anchored me so much. It mm-hmm. gave me so much mm-hmm. yeah. life when all my thoughts, I don't know if you've ever been there before. Yeah when your world just starts spinning and there are all mm-hmm. these mind games, like what did you do to yeah. just steady you? Cause I, mm, I yeah. hope I'm not the only one that's had that experience no. <laughs> at all. No. But today just talking about mind games and just mm-hmm. the battles that the enemy does in your mind, what have you done? Mm. That verse, it saved yeah. my life. Yeah. It saved my baby's life. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Mm. But what have you done to steady yourself? Yeah. Honestly, I, I love the fact that the power of the word of God. Mm. And when yes. when the Holy Spirit just applies it mm-hmm. to your life. Mm-hmm. When I was really little, when I was just a really wee girl, um, I, I was, my dad was my hero. And I remember thinking and saying to my sister, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like my dad. Mm-hmm. And then the years go on, my father takes his life. I bury all the pain. I mm-hmm. throw myself into ministry, which honestly... I think when there's people have trauma in their life mm-hmm. and they don't know what to do with it, particularly when you're young, you know, you kind of push it into the cellar of your soul yeah. 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 and you find some way yeah. of going on. Sometimes mm-hmm. the different masks people wear, whether right. they turn to mm-hmm. money or relationships or yeah. to prescription medication or to alcohol, mm-hmm. any of those things. Yeah. I found the perfect place to hide Christian ministry. Yeah. I mean, who's yeah. going to come up to me and say, right. put that Bible down? Right. Are we going to have an intervention? No more second yeah. kings for yeah. you, lady. Right. Wow. <laughs> but God is the only one who knows whether oh, we're yes. serving a pain or yeah. passion. Yeah. yeah. And so I get to, um, I go through seminary. I, I, I co-host the 700 Club for five years with Pat mm-hmm. Robertson. Mm-hmm. But inside, I'm still that scared little broken girl mm-hmm. who won't let anybody get close to her in case you see what my dad saw. Mm-hmm. I discovered it's possible to be very well known and desperately lonely. Mm-hmm. That's how I lived. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then my life hit the wall one day and I end up, and by that evening, I'm in the locked ward of a psychiatric hospital and I'm the same age as my dad. The very thing I Sheila. dreaded wow. became the reality. But even though... Nobody was allowed to come and see me and, you know, they're not even allowed to know you're there. Yeah. The Lamb of God checked in mm. with me. <laughs> Amen. Mm. Yeah. And, I'll, and at nighttime, that's when it was the hardest when yeah. thoughts get out. Because yeah. I remember laying in bed at night and the thoughts would come. Well, this is what you wanted. Mm-hmm. Remember you said you wanted to grow up and be just like your dad. Well, here you are. Wow. You're not going to make it out here. Wow. You're not. And so what I would do yeah. and literally... <laughs> It was honestly, it wasn't even with a ton of faith. It was with the little bit I had left. Mm -hmm. I would get out of bed and I would plant my feet Mm -hmm. down on the floor. And from Psalm 27, Mm -hmm. I would declare loudly, Mm -hmm. I believe I will live to see the goodness Mm -hmm. of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. And every now and again, a nurse would come and check on me because I'm talking to somebody in my room and there's nobody there. And in a psych hospital, that's a little (laughs) suspicious. But it was just literally the power of the word Mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. Um, Overcoming all the lies of the enemy and coating my mind. And, And the reason I said it out loud was, I think at times it's good for your ears to hear yes. what your eyes are reading. Yes. Yes. And it's just like yes. this, mm-hmm. because everything, all the lies, the thing that's yeah. subtle about the enemy is there's enough truth in yes. his lie to right. make it palpable. Come right. on now. If he just came and said, yes. you know, by tomorrow yeah. your yes. name is yes. going to be Tommy and you're yeah. going to be four foot two, I would think, well, probably not. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. But if there's enough truth in there, yeah. Um, but the truth of the word of God, that yeah. helmet of salvation yes. yeah. that you clothe your mind in. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, every single yeah. night mm. in that hospital, every night. Mm. And I started it mm. gently. By the time I was ready to be released, it was, I believe. Wow. I will live yes. to see the goodness of the Lord wow. in the yeah. land and of the living. Wow. That I think that, when you talk about those verses that God yeah. gave you, yeah. I think the, the Lord gives us yeah. Yeah. powerful scriptures Absolutely. because that's where the enemy loves to attack yeah. our yeah. mind. 
It is so critical to have scripture to take your thought captive. It is because the enemy, he is insistent, like he won't stop. Some of us think that it's just like this cute little devil with a pitchfork that just comes out on Halloween. No, 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 no. He is a real adversary and he will continue to bombard you with all these different things. And we are just not able to respond to it. Just anyway, get, get away from me, devil. That doesn't work. It's the Bible, it's his word that's actually your sword that helps us to just stand our ground and say, no, 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 but God, this is what you said. And this word is real, this is true. And it's important to actually have that word. So if you're going through something, I challenge you to get a scripture. Maybe you need to Google it, I don't know, but get a scripture that you're gonna say over and over and over again. And you may start saying it with a little bit of faith, but I'm telling you, if you continue to say that consistently, you'll see that God's word is true. It doesn't return <laughs> void, it really does. And so every time you get um, bombarded with all these thoughts, again, just say that scripture, the scripture that he gave you, and you will watch the enemy actually flee from you. He may come at a, another opportune time, and then you can respond again with scripture and say, it is written. But that word, it anchors you. We need it so desperately because our shoo, 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 that will leave me, it's not good enough. Paul says, take captive yeah. your thoughts right. that and make them obedient yeah. 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 to Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yet so many of us, we're allowing our thoughts to take us captive. Yeah. Right. Come on. Our thoughts are putting us in the prison. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. right? right. And, and it's that invisible, toxic belief. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and what you did in that moment was you said, no, <laughs> I'm going to take this thought captive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to take this thought captive. This thought doesn't own me. Yeah. This yeah. thought is not mm -hmm. Lord over my life. No. Yeah. This thought is probably not even true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I'm going to stand in the invisible truthful <laughs> yeah. belief That's right. that my God is with me. Yes. My God yeah. is for me. Mm -hmm. And if my God is with me and for me, nothing can be against mm -hmm. me. Yeah. But it takes that active yeah. choice yeah. to on. say this thought, mm -hmm. this thought doesn't own me. Yes. You know, what's fascinating is uh, neuroscientists say that we think anywhere yeah. from 30 to 60,000 thoughts in a day. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of it, things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is yeah. it more for women? Uh, it's more <laughs> for women, I believe. Yeah, so I believe it's more for women. But I often, mouth more. I literally like to think of my thoughts, like, you know, when you go to the airport, right? And, yeah. and there's all these planes, right? They're, they're all coming in for landing. And I, I literally had to start thinking about my thoughts like planes. And, yeah. and there's 30 to 60,000 thoughts, That's right? So cool. Going over my head. Yeah. Would we clear every one of those thoughts for landing? Yeah. No way. We yeah. would not. Right, it right. would be chaos. Yeah. Yeah. And yet I think that when we, when we have a thought, we just automatically think, well, I should clear that thought for landing. And, yeah. and God actually is saying to us, no, you're the air traffic controller. Right. Like right. say this this plane is yeah. not landing yeah. here. Yeah. Right. And you redirect right. it. Yeah. And I think that's what we do when we take captive our thoughts. That's really helpful. We yeah. say this plane is not landing mm -hmm. on the runway of my mind. Yeah. yeah. Because if I let this land on the runway of my mind, hmm. I'm gonna let this toxicity. Yeah. Invade my soul. Yeah. yeah. It is going to impact my relationships. Yeah. yeah. It's going to create distance in my yeah. relationship with yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. This is toxic. This is not yeah. true. Paul admonishes us and gives us a piece of great advice where he says, take every thought captive. Well, you know, when I think of, I remember one night when my son's hamster got out of the cage and it was like chaos in our house. We were looking everywhere to try and find where Hamtaro had disappeared. We looked under everything. And we finally captured him and put him back in his cage. And every, we th assumed everything was fine. But a couple of days later, we discovered he was missing again. It was a faulty catch. And we started all over again. And you know, it's, it's the same sometimes with thoughts. You know, a thought will come up and you know it's not a good, healthy thought. And so you capture that thought as scripture tells us, as Paul encourages us to do. But sometimes you have to do it over and over and over again. Don't just think because you've captured something once, it's gone. You might have to chase that little monster around a few more times. Connect with us on social media. Like, comment, and share your favorite moments from today. Join the conversation with women all over the world getting better, better together. together. 
enemy's so cunning. Like yes. he's so clever yes. and he has these schemes and it's a little bit of truth in it. Yep. So you don't even yep. know. It's like, oh, okay, that's yep. a safe thought. Right. And it comes in yes, and then right. it ends up being yep. like this catastrophic thing. So I'm like, that's why it's so critical to just yeah. have that right. truth, yeah. to know what yeah. this is. You know, a tiny little thing that I started doing just so that I could differentiate truthful thoughts from untruthful thoughts mm -hmm. is I start by saying, I'm having the thought so that I don't actually believe I am the thought. Yeah, right? That's really good. Oh, I yeah, love that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm great. having the thought. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry, right? Yeah. <laughs> Versus I'm hungry. Hunger is not my identity. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just having a yeah. thought. And so literally giving that disclaimer uh -huh. has really helped me in my relationship with God to yeah. understand, oh yeah, just 30, 60,000 thoughts flying overhead. Yeah, I'm so having good. the thought. I'm yeah. having the thought I'm frustrated with my husband right now versus I'm really frustrated with my right. husband it's right really now. Good. Because when I hold yeah. that in, right, it's true. It's then that's going to start to become something that I believe yeah. Yeah. and something I start to act yeah. on versus yeah. me yeah. naming and saying, I'm just having the thought right now and then amazing. answering yeah. it with, yeah. Yeah. is that true? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Is that true? And that's true? not me. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. I, I, that's really good. I think that's a phenomenal practice because every thought you have is either bringing you life or death. Mm -hmm. That's right. There's not like a, that's right. there's not just this general place where nothing's happening. It's either life right. or death. Yes. Right. And we have to decide what we're going to do with those thoughts. Yeah. We can start on that path of the, the thoughts just going <laughs> darker and darker yes. Yes. so yeah. quickly. Yeah. And it is a discipline when I love when scripture comes alive in whatever, you know, circumstance mm -hmm. we're in. I remember one day, our youngest son, I had gotten an email from his school about, you know, they were uh, starting the little elementary choir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading the email and immediately my heart feeling the disappointment of my son who's on the autism mm -hmm. spectrum. And my thoughts just started like, plummeting, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it just from like opening an email. I was oh, having yeah. a great day. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> totally. And then I opened the email and I yep. just, the enemy just like, yes. see, he'll never be able to do that. Whatever, all these things. Yeah. And yeah. I, and I remember in that moment going, I'm stopping right here. Mm -hmm. I'm taking captive, casting down, yeah. yes. you know, these thoughts. It's trying to exalt the, yes. you know, oh, yes. against, against the knowledge of God. And what does God say about my son? Right. You know, I'm going to focus on the things that are pure of a good report, of, you know, that. meditating yes. on yeah. the promises yeah. that have been declared over my son. So it is, it's a discipline. It is a spiritual discipline. Yeah. I think for me, learning to like take control of, of runaway thoughts, um, it's, it's been a process. I, I think when I was younger, you know, I remember in my 20s, I really dealt with the season of, um, you know, probably not like clinically depressed. And I know a lot of people, you know, deal with depression and, and you know, I'm all for methods that kind of help people through that. But for me, it really was a spiritual struggle. And I found myself down paths of thought that, um, that were destructive and, um, and so I, again, really just spending time in the presence of God. I know I say this over and over, and I know I'm a worshiper, but you know what? We're all, we're all worshipers. We're all called to, um, to, to, to come into His presence and to spend time with Him. So really, I think you know, knowing knowing the Scripture, putting the Word of God in our minds, and and rehearsing, meditating on it. You know, in the Psalms, David said, "You know, I meditate on Your law day and night." It would be so. It would do us so much good to really meditate on His Word, but then to spend time in His presence. I found that those negative thoughts and, you know, be begin to dissipate and then learning how to, in, in my own life, as I've grown in the Lord, that I, that I recognize those destructive thoughts sooner and I choose to replace them with the Word of God and, um, it, you know, and even sometimes even prophetic words that have been spoken over my life, over my family's life, I'm going to say, you know, God, this is what, this was your, this is what you said. This, these are your thoughts about me, about my family. And um, I'm tuning out the, the, the whispers and the lies of the enemy, and I'm tuning into the truth of what God says about me and my family, my situation. But I think it's that leaning in, and, and, it, and it does require discipline 
to, very to, intentional. It is. Yeah, it yeah. needs to be intentional. Mm-hmm. And I, I love that it's described as a helmet of salvation, yes. right? Like yeah. I, I just picture this big helmet coming onto my head, right? That That is protecting my thoughts. And and I think about the, the passage of scripture where wow. when, when we get lost in that toxicity or yeah. when we get lost in those lies mm-hmm. and, and, and the scriptures say, restore to me the joy oh yes. of my, of my salvation. salvation. So good, so right? Good. And, and that's what mm-hmm. happens when we reapply the helmet, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Restore to me true thoughts, restore to me pure thoughts, you know? And and Paul talks about this. What are the things that we are to think about? Things that are pure and lovely and praiseworthy, right? And and, and he has this beautiful list. And, 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 And it's like, that's what we do when we actually participate with Holy Spirit and say, no, I'm going to reapply yeah. yes. the helmet of salvation. Right. I am going to fix this on my mind. Yeah. Let me ask yeah. you all a question. Go ahead. How much of this, of the struggles with our mind, um, is impacted because of what we take in? Mm. Oh, yeah. Like so I'm much. thinking of television and I'm thinking yes. of social media. Yeah. Yes. In particular. So I mean, it's like, yeah. I remember yeah. the first time, I didn't mm. even know what social media was until Natalie Grant and I were flying back from something. And she said yeah. to me, uh, do you Twitter? And I said, well, I hope not. <laughs> like, I no idea you know what. Like, Whatever that is, I don't want to do it. Don't do that. I'm almost sure I'm better. <laughs> and she explained what it was. At first I thought, oh, how stupid is that? And right. then I thought, yeah. well, it could be a way of praying for people. I yeah. started, you know, I connected with some people and we set up prayer teams and things, but it's yeah. become very toxic now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even things like this, I remember I was going through Instagram and I saw a picture of three of my friends at an event. And my first thought was, why didn't they ask yeah. me to come? Right. Yes. I wish I could have gone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like, if we're not very, I think these are days to be yes. awake. Yes. Yes. We need to be spiritually so, awake. So good. Yeah. Because good. there's, I mean, I mean, and he's so subtle, just little thoughts, yeah. little things mm-hmm. that can shift the direction. You so say good. you're having a yeah. great day and suddenly. Yeah. 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 yeah, And that can happen to all of us. That That's one of my prayers right. for, my, for myself, mm-hmm. for us, for a better together yes. community, mm-hmm. that we would be awake. Yes. And and take those thoughts captive yeah. immediately. Yeah. You know? Stop and them I'll, in their tracks. Yes. Yeah. I think sometimes um, we kind of devalue the power of our thoughts just because we've devalued ourselves. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't matter where you are in your your journey, your thoughts are important. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, I mean health comes out of our, I mean, our body yes. functions. Yes. When we talk about thirty to sixty thousand thoughts, like we don't think I don't think about blinking. <laughs> but that's my right. brain telling yeah, right. me to think. I don't. I don't think about like I could think about a six layer chocolate cake and mm-hmm. think it's really mm-hmm. great, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't always think about the negative mm-hmm. thoughts. Right. And I think yeah. it's really. I think that no matter where you are, you don't have to be in ministry. Just you could be sitting at home right yeah. now, and you have been embroiled in this downward spiral because right. you're not thinking so highly of yourself. But you it doesn't matter who you are, what your past has been like, or even what where you are mm-hmm. right now. You are so loved yeah. and so valued by God. Yeah. And what I am convinced of mm. is that a thief never goes in and robs something that is of no value. Right. Mm. So the battle over your right. thoughts mm. is because there's value to That's who so you good. are. Yeah. Yes. And so if the enemy can pull you off yeah. track, it's not because you're less than, it's right. because you have something that he doesn't want you to walk so into. Good. So yeah. he's going right. to stop yep. you up. He's going to so prohibit good. you from going there. Mm-hmm. The other thing that the enemy is going to try to do is not only rob you of your value, but just for you personally. So then you're like, well, why should I even battle this? Why should I even fight this? Is like you said, you're going to begin to be defined Mm -hmm. by Mm -hmm. what your thoughts say. So I think, I think it's a process for me. It was like, Oh, wait a minute. I am not a failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I am not less than. Mm -hmm. Right. And because they had become so ingrained in my neural pathways, Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, honestly, right. if you start looking at the yeah. chemistry and the way the the, um, yeah. the way our brain functions, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's beautiful. It's magnificent. It's yeah. unbelievable the way we're created. Mm-hmm. But we actually have to rewire our yeah. brain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that just takes. Sometimes that's a habit of thirty days. Right. Sometimes it's right. you. You have to be focused for thirty. So you yeah. can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just paying attention to the fact that beyond that lie is something significant. Yeah. So yeah. the lie should be yep. an indicator not an intimidator. The fear that you feel should be an indicator, not an intimidator. The the depression, the sadness, the downward spiral should be an indicator. So what I discovered in all of the shame-based stuff that I was walking through from the 
stuff that I walked through as a child yeah. and the sexual abuse was, oh, wait a minute, that's not me. I'm not gonna let it intimidate yeah. me. A few years ago, our, we had a son, um, we have four kids and the youngest is a son. And he started experiencing a lot of problems in school. Like he wasn't listening and there was a lot of disciplinary issues. And, and then it got to the place, even my husband and I are pastors. So he even got kicked out of our own children's program because he was so badly behaved. And I remember thinking, dear Lord, like somehow we have failed this child. And I don't understand what's happening. He's not listening to anybody. And so we decided um, that we were going to have to shift and change some things. And then a friend said to me in the process of all this, because I was going into the school almost weekly about him, she said to him, you have to, while he's struggling in this area, there's a gift in there that the enemy would like to try to steal. And she said, if he's having a hard time being quiet, it's probably a gift of communication. And the light turned on and I realized, yes, he has a gift of communication. So we decided from that point, the helmet of salvation for him and for us, honestly, as his parents, was we were gonna be declaring over him what God already spoke. And so all those issues where he was feeling like he was a problem, we, we declared over him, no, you're not, you're not the problem. You're part of the solution. You're a leader submitted to God and you have the mind of Christ and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And so we began speaking these declarations and then we made him declare them. He didn't like it at the time, but we made him declare them. And then I printed out these declarations and hung them over his bed so that the first thing he saw in the morning and the last thing he saw at night was what God spoke over him. And I'm telling you what, within six months, there was a huge behavior change because Evan saw the value of the calling of God on his life. And even though the enemy tried to fight it, we just kept putting on the helmet of salvation. Here's the salvation Here's the power of salvation to this situation. God's gonna turn it around. And he began to think in terms of what God had already spoken. And he'll tell you today, declarations is part of his daily life. My daughter had a fear, huge fear of the dark. Yeah. And every night I would wake up with this Gabby when she was about two years old, I'd wake up to the hot breath in my face. She'd oh. be breathing in my face <laughs> and she'd be, mama, there's monsters in my room. Mm. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, there's no monsters in your room because I had four kids. I was in ministry. I was exhausted. I just would scoop her up in my arms, pull her into bed with me and we'd just sink into the fluffy sheets. Mm. I'm like, you're okay, babe. Until like two weeks later, the Lord said to me, all you're doing is soothing her fears. Mm. You need to expose them. Whoa. He said, she can reach the light switch. So the next mm. night she came in and told me she was afraid of the dark. I was like, babe, turn the light on. <laughs> That's like expose so the fear. Right. And I think that's what wow. the enemy wants to keep wow. those mm -hmm. dark thoughts yeah. in the dark. Yeah. But no matter who you are, you could, maybe you don't even know God. You have the strength to turn on the light switch on. to expose right. the lie of the that's enemy. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time we have to stop. So at what point do we wake up and say, I'm not going to soothe that anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm going to expose it. Yeah. And I'm going to really become, because we're never going to have peace. Yeah. We're never going to walk fully yeah. out with yeah. God. Come like on. he died for the fullness of life. Mm -hmm. And we can be sitting in the dark being like, I'm so afraid. And mm -hmm. God's like, I've yeah. already given you the power to turn the switch on. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to live the full yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. I think really it's up good. to us. Yeah. Right. And I think about what Paul says in Romans 12, right? Do not be conformed yes. by the patterns of this world, mm -hmm. but be transformed mm -hmm. yeah. by what? Renewing. The renewing, renewing of your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to your point, there is so much around us that wants to conform us. Yeah. Oh, God. That wants oh, yeah. to <laughs> shrink yeah. us, yeah. make us small, make us yeah. scared, mm -hmm. right? To, to retreat yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, no, that yeah. the, the actual invitation is transformation. Yeah. Yeah. But I right. think we have to start paying attention For sure. right. to what are we paying attention to? Yes. Right. Like, yeah. where am I placing where my attention? And, yeah. and in that moment, right, right. I'm, I'm placing my attention on the dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I need to shift my attention yeah. mm -hmm. to the light. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know how dark my thoughts were. Mm -hmm. I also didn't know how negative my thoughts are mm. you know you take a yeah. test and it's like i have the gift of positivity that's one of my strengths i'm like yeah. yes yeah. you know right. yeah. yes <laughs> but then you start to track your mm. thoughts and it's just like these are pretty negative mm. and how i found out was what um i was just reading philippians 4 like so what you should be thinking about yes. mm -hmm. and <laughs> lord just yeah. okay write down things that are true yeah things oh. that are virtuous so like good, write these things down yes. so good. and it took me a while to write down so yeah. something that was true mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. that was virtuous, something that was a good report. And yeah. I'm like, why? And Lord was like, 
do you see like your mm. thoughts? Wow. I mean, my, my husband thinks I'm crazy because <laughs> I clean up our refrigerator often. Um, yeah. Um, our Fine refrigerator. Often. Oh, I'm not going <laughs> to give you all of that. <laughs> Sheila, but our, our refrigerator. Yes. And then, um, cause I'm like, Ooh, how long has it been there? Two days, three days. Mm-hmm. Come on, trash it. Right. Or right. I, sometimes yes. it's always the salad dressings every yeah. now and then I may yeah. I forgot. And I'm like, yeah, what is this? Right, this right. expired, like, five, like trash it. The or I go team. and oh yeah. my, and I get into the pantry. We have like a large pantry. I get in there yeah. and I'm looking for something. I see something the other day. I'm like, I haven't seen this row cause it's a little high. So I haven't gotten to it <laughs> right. a little bit. I'm like, I saw something 2019. Yes. <laughs> we moved from one house to another. That means I brought something that was old oh, and so crazy good. into and our so new space. Wow. And it's just like, but I see this. I'm like, this, this, so if I consume this, this can hurt me yes. because this is an old thing. Yeah. And the Lord was like, okay, what about your so thoughts? Wow. I think yeah. that there are some thoughts that we have to almost think to mm. get us through some certain situations so prior to Christ. But then he changes us, you yeah, know, yeah. there are other things things that we should start thinking of. And it's like, if you're not aware of all of that, Mm. you're going to start consuming. You're going to take in things that perhaps served you okay in some season, but they've expired. And if you don't know it, then you're just going to take it in and it's going to produce a life that you just don't like. That's right. And you had it just sitting on the shelf. Like how many of us just have expired thoughts sitting on the shelf? Yeah. Yeah. We don't realize how toxic they are. Yeah. Or how many of us, I like to unsubscribe. Yeah, like on yes. a Is that right? just so it, p- yes. it's the best. Does it make you happy? Yes. Yes. Because I sign yeah. up for the discount. For the discount. Right. Yes. And then yes. I unsubscribe. Yeah. Unsubscribe. Yep. Like, so wow. <laughs> clean inbox. Yes. yes. Empowering. Yes. It's, yes. But it's it is. freeing my inbox. Yeah. Up. Yes. Um, anyway. Which is oh. what we need to do. Which is what, what we need in. to do. Yes. Yeah. Right. We need to unsubscribe in the mind. Yeah. yeah. But we don't know what's in our mind. That's a good point. Yeah. I feel like if we don't like the life that we're living, mm-hmm. and some of us, uh, we just don't like the life that we're living, mm-hmm. I think it's because we've let some thoughts in. Yeah. And they have not just become thoughts, they've become beliefs. Yeah. And it's yeah. now part of our mm-hmm. core. Yeah. Yeah. And it's God has a way to dig yeah. it up. Like yeah. you need the word of God that helps right. you literally like a hammer to dig up those right. thoughts so and good. pave new ways of thinking. Because yeah. yeah. if not, you're going to start going to that place mm-hmm. of shame, going to that yeah. place right. of just mm-hmm. less yeah. than. Yeah. And living a life that's sub the cross yeah. and the resurrection. That's right. Because right. Yeah. Right. you can't stop a thought. You have to replace it. Yes. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Like you yeah. can't just say, okay, I'm not going to think those thoughts anymore. Yeah. So what you have you to fill think? that space right. with something else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. God always has next for us. He takes us from glory to glory. And there's some thoughts that we've had, and perhaps we needed to have this during crazy times, but God is taking us to a new level. And there's some thoughts that just don't, they're not going to serve us well on the other. So what it is, it's actually whatever season that you're about to go into, maybe it's a new job, maybe it's a new relationship, whatever it is, and saying, God, is there fear that's holding me back here? Is there some type of uncertainty that I have? Because oftentimes that thought it actually comes from an old way of thinking. And so when you find out what that mm is, what that angst is, name it. And then you'll realize that, wait, I can't take this into this new season. So God, give me new thoughts. What is it that you actually want me to believe? What is it that you're calling me up to? And honestly, he'll give it to you. He's not this God, you ask a question and he's like, oh, I don't know. It doesn't work like that. He'll actually speak. He'll give us great and unsearchable things that we do not know, but their thoughts, again, that we have, and it's not going to serve us in the next that God has for us. Hi, everybody. Zai here. I'm with the awesome Sheila Walsh. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're going to be answering some of our viewer questions. Mo reached out on Instagram asking, how do you help someone who is going through anxiety and depression? Oh, Mo, that is a great question. And honestly, I think what people don't understand is that depression and anxiety, they don't just impact the person who's struggling. Mm. They impact those who love them, those who are watching on. And so often, you know, we want to fix people. We want to make things better. I discovered that one of the greatest gifts, I have a dear friend who has struggled with severe crippling anxiety. Mm. And I've discovered one of the greatest gifts sometimes I can give her is to simply sit and listen. You know, there's something about the gift of presence. You know, I think we're tempted sometimes as believers to think we have to have all the answers to everything. 
But I think one of the greatest gifts you can give is simply to sit and to listen, to be someone who receives your friend. And, and you might want to pass on this little thing that I learned. I spent a month in a psychiatric hospital diagnosed with severe clinical depression and post-traumatic stress disorder. But I remember on my looking at my dismissal papers when I was being, when I left the hospital and they'd uh -huh. written the words, severe clinical depression. And you know, it worked out. If you take the word depression and you rearrange all the letters, you get this, I pressed on. And honestly, that's what we do as believers. You know, we walk through tough times, but because of Jesus, we press on. So good. Get the latest Better Together news delivered straight to your inbox. Visit bettertogether.tv to sign up now. One of the things I think, the number of believers within the body of Christ who are hampered by unforgiveness. Oh, mm. so good. I, yeah, so that's good. something that's really been, yeah. Yeah. the Lord's been talking to me about because mm. it's like when you have unforgiveness in your yeah. heart, it just, it mm. squelches the Holy mm. Spirit. It yeah. just, and the other day, I, well not the other day, it was probably last year, I went for pedicure and I'm thinking through this whole thing and I'm sitting there with my feet in hot water and I'm thinking of anybody that I could have anything yeah. Again, mm -hmm. any, mm -hmm. anything, because yeah. I'm not, I, I don't hold things for a long yeah. time. Hmm. Yeah. I just, I've, part of it's because I've got terrible memory. So I don't remember <laughs> what you said. I, I have the memory <laughs> of an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I getting older. Yeah. <laughs> but the Lord brought somebody to my mind and I'm like, Lord, that was like 30 mm. years ago. Wow. Yeah. 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 And, but it was somebody who'd been really unkind to me and it hurt me because I really had kind of trusted yeah. them and it yeah. broke relationship. Mm. Yeah. And, and I was like, but Lord, I, I forgave him. And mm. I felt like I said, but d does he know that? Wow. And I'm like, oh gosh, I don't even know how to find his phone number anymore. Mm. Right. So I thought, okay, I've got this one old number. I'm going to try it. So I sent a text to this person and I said, hey, a long time since we talked. Um, and I know our last encounter was not good. And, and I felt the Lord say to me, I don't want you to say anything about his part. Just yeah. own your own. Yeah. Mm. And so I was like, um, for anything that I did that contributed mm. to the breakup of our friendship, please forgive me. Mm. And it was amazing. Within wow. 20 minutes, I heard back from this person. Wow. And it was like, this has been bothering mm. me for years. Wow. Um, I, I knew some of the things I said were not true. Mm. And, and it was just... I thought, wouldn't it be great if we all, not just yeah. woke up, but had a clean slate, mm, right? wow. you know? Just really so ask good. the Holy Spirit. Because mm. my thing is, mm. you know, living in this time, I mean, we're not on this earth at this moment by mistake. Right. We're here for a divine appointed purpose. Yeah. 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 And I'm thinking, if we just determined, you know what, Lord, we're gonna get rid of, I mean, not just capture our thoughts, mm. yeah. but if there's anything lurking in the yeah. darkness so yeah. of times that we've, We've hurt someone or they've hurt us, but yeah. we're holding it uh -huh. just to release it and it's let it go show. and just yeah. stand up clean. Yeah. Unforgiveness, right. of course, leads to bitterness, yes. which then yeah. becomes the way we frame yeah. everything, everything in our life. Mm -hmm. It becomes the that filter that we see things through. And um, my daughter, uh, who's 21, she's going through a ministry school. And um, the first uh, couple weeks of, of ministry school, they were walking through um, the inner healing, like talking about, oh. you know, just being healed from the inside out. And they went through this process of walking through forgiving, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And yeah. she was like, mom, I I just, she was, I'm, I'm so grateful that, cause she's been through, in the last few years, she's been through quite a bit, but it's like, she goes, I felt so, I, there wasn't much that came up. I realized mm -hmm. I had forgiven, mm -hmm. you know, and, she, and it shows in her life mm -hmm. and how just the decision she's making and how yeah. free she is. And, and so it is so important that we do yeah. that. Forgiveness is such a, I feel like that's a daily surrender, don't you? Oh, oh. God. Yeah. I mean, I'm with yeah. you. I don't remember what happened three days ago, but, but, <laughs> <laughs> but there's time, like you think, mm -hmm. sometimes I think I've forgiven somebody, but somebody mentions their name and I still yeah, feel I this. Know. Yeah. yeah. Little, right. And, yeah. And forgiveness, I am convinced, is not an emotion or a feeling it's a choice yes. okay yes. so when you yeah. someone mentioned someone's name mm -hmm. and you feel what do you do well then i i'm like lord why am i still feeling yeah. this mm -hmm. so what am i supposed to do with this mm -hmm. so i'm gonna verbalize i forgive them mm -hmm. apparently there's still something there yeah. that i yeah. have yeah. there's 
maybe I have forgiven them, but there's another piece that I had mm -hmm. hidden in my heart. So I've forgiven them a little bit, yeah. but I'm still holding on to something. Yeah. So what is it that's still holding me back? Yeah. And I think sometimes forgiveness, sometimes there's a supernatural grace yes. and you're like, wow, okay, good. We're friends again. We're good. Mm -hmm. And then there's other times time. Yes. Time just mm -hmm. heals wounds. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that who, I mean, there's, we've been like, you can't be in ministry and not be hurt. You can't be in life and not be no, hurt. Right. So, but there's just some, God never wastes a hurt. Yeah. yeah. And so at the end of the day, I'm just like, some people you're going to restore the relationship and other people you're right. not. Right. Yeah. The bigger thing for me is that you stay tender. Yeah. Yes. 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 Cause like you were talking about, it's very yeah. easy yeah. To, for me because if you did one thing, I may not ever trust you again, mm. <laughs> but yeah, I think the key is, is that we love people. Yeah. And trust God. Yeah. Oh, that's yes. a good, that's a good Yeah, and we and we've all heard, right? Yeah. That the the if we hold a grudge, if we hold bitterness, if we hold unforgiveness, yeah. the person that's being no. hurt the most right. is they don't yourself. Care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's you. Right. Well, who was it? Anne Lamont that said it's like drinking rat poison yeah. and hoping the other person <laughs> will die. Right? Yeah. Right? You, yes. You're the one yeah. that is unforgiveness chains you to your pain. Yeah. Yeah. It, it chains you yeah. to your yeah. pain. I think for me, the greatest release has been, remember at the end of Joseph's story where his brothers finally oh, show up yes. and yes. he's yes. like, you know, yes, you intended this mm -hmm. for evil, yes. but God, God intends it yes. for good. For me, when I finally came to a place where I believe Ooh. in the sovereignty of God, yes. Yes. I can let everybody else off yeah. the book. Yes. Oh, right. it's, yes. Because That's God, so God has been in it all right? along. He's yeah. been with yeah. me all along. Yeah. And yeah, mm. you, you may actually have yeah. meant that to really harm me. Yeah. And for a time, it yeah. did, but yeah. God intended yeah. for good. And you well, know, she was that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's abundance, right? Yeah. That's what grace is. Yeah. That's salvation. Yeah. That is an abundance mindset. God is for me. Yeah. So I'm going to walk this earth and I'm going to be for others. Yeah. yeah. Right? And <laughs> I'm going to live that way and offer that kind of grace back. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I am so grateful for Jesus is because there is nothing that Jesus is unwilling to forgive. Uh, his mercy is new every single morning. Like every single morning we wake up, there's fresh mercy for us. There's fresh forgiveness for us. And to the person that thinks like, yeah, well, maybe for you there is fresh mercy, but you don't know about this thing in my past. I would just say to you, His mercy is fresh for you too. It's fresh for you. And all you have to do is ask for it and believe you've received it. Forgiveness, helmet of salvation. I mean, forgiveness speaks of, wow. you know, just yes. God forgiving us. Uh, right. And that's with mm. salvation of everything. I used to struggle with forgiveness until I just, I remember just, um, just being with the Lord one day and it was like, so how much have I forgiven you? Yeah, I know. Right. And, <laughs> and it wasn't to cause shame or no. anything like that. It was right. pretty loving. And I started to almost like list in my mind things. Mm -hmm. It was like, I've forgiven you of all that. Release mm -hmm. that. Let that go. Yeah. Because yeah. I think I can forgive yeah. the big things, but the little things, the petty yeah. things, mm -hmm. I hold on to that. Yeah. And so he was so annoying. Oh, no. It's just, <laughs> I'm just petty. <laughs> and it's just, okay. No, but I've yeah. forgiven you mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I was mm -hmm. one of those chief of sinners. Mm -hmm. I was just good at being bad. And when God rescued mm -hmm. me, if yeah. I start yeah. thinking about him. Oh gosh, maybe I can cry at how kind God has been. Yeah, absolutely. And the yeah, fact yeah. that he doesn't remember yeah. all of that stuff yeah. right. and he gives me a future and yeah, all that. And he yeah. loves me. Well, yeah. it's overwhelming yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to forgiveness, even like different things, like with people or sometimes my husband, it might be different things. And it's yeah. like, and it's like, I hear the Lord now say, mm. let that go, forgive. Yeah. Like you can't, mm. I've forgiven you of this much. How can, you can't forgive of that. Right. Mm. And so now it's just, I'm able to forgive truly mm. because of that helmet of salvation, because of that, free. it just sets you free, yes. you know? Yes. And it's just this deep gratitude. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. just, it's amazing. Yeah. Which yeah. at the end of the day, it's the helmet of salvation. 
So the only way to combat those thoughts is to remember, like you're, that's the whole key. That's the whole Mm -hmm. key that opens the door to a mindset that actually is flourishing is yeah. remembering the power of the cross. Yeah. Yes. Like the, we, none of us can do it. We can replace those thoughts. We can do all those things. But if we lose yeah. sight of the power of the cross, right. it's just positive thinking. Right. right. And positive right. thinking will only get you so far. Yeah. The power of the cross transforms Absolutely. the way we think. I think renewing our mind through the word of God, not only um, changes how we see ourselves, but it changes how we see others. And I think when we get a good look and a picture of, you know, how God has redeemed our life, you know, one of the Psalms says, you know, he redeemed my life from the pit. When we can rem- think about what God has brought us out of, what he has rescued us from, um, it's easier. It, we, you know, we get that picture of, we, then we then begin to see other people through the eyes of God. And we kind of begin to maybe get a little picture of how, uh, you know, uh, uh, of how he created them or what, what he sees in them. You know, anybody can see the negative stuff. It takes the the having our minds renewed and looking through eyes of, you know, of, of faith and having renewed vision that we can see the gold in people. And so I think a big part of the renewing of our minds in in how we walk that out in relationships is we see people through God's eyes a little bit more. Love just restoring me, you know, the joy of salvation. You mentioned it earlier. Whenever I'm feeling just down and I think mental health journey, it's just on the rise. Yeah. People are aware of it. Right, yes. And I'm so glad that people are aware of it. Right. But I, um, I'm like, but there's a joy. Mm-hmm. that yes. comes with remembering like yeah. my salvation yeah. yeah and god if i'm feeling just um just down yeah and you know you can feel down there's one level mm-hmm. then you can feel down down yeah. and you mm-hmm. can quickly mm-hmm. t- like go further down and it's like god there's a just let me see the cross again. Yeah. Yes. And I visualize him on the cross and mm. with his crown of thorns. It was like yeah. any type of mental mm. torment that right. you might be experiencing. I already wore that crown yeah. of thorn. Like I yeah. hear me, Zai, and I start to look at his whole body and mm. it was like, I did all of this yeah. for you yeah. to walk in wholeness, to yeah. walk in health and to live in abundance. And when yeah. I see that, it's almost like a reset. Yeah. You know, I have yes. kids that have a lot of broken toys and stuff like that. And you have yeah. to reset things all the time. And yeah. that mm-hmm. prayer mm-hmm. just restoring me the joy of salvation. Yes. It just, so it jump starts something mm, inside of me. And it literally, it just makes everything mm. yeah. better. I do think that there's a lot that our world is just subtly and sometimes not so subtly mm-hmm. just stuffing down our faces. Mm-hmm. And I'm just proud. I, and again, community helps us yes, to put the right yes, things in. Of yes. course, reading our Bible mm-hmm. helps to put the right thing in. Listening, um, tuning in to this helps us to put the right mm-hmm. things in because all these things, it really affects what we, of course, think and what we believe about life and about our God. Yeah. But I'm going to close up in prayer. I just know that mm-hmm. this conversation is just been a blessing to people. And I know that there's someone out here that's just struggling and there's a lot of shame attached to what Mm -hmm. they believe or what's going through their thoughts. Mm -hmm. And for some, it is, hey, you do need to get some clinical help. Um, And there's no, you can't tell God how to heal you. No. Mm -hmm. Right. It's good. Like, sorry. You can't tell God how to heal you. There's that aspect, but there's a reset that's going to take place Mm -hmm. even to viewers as they're listening now. I think they've been spiraling down in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And today, right now, God is going to reset it and bring just a joy of salvation. Shall we pray? Mm -hmm. Yes. Lord, oh God, you are alive and you're here with us, Lord God, in this conversation, Lord God. You're with the viewers, those watching right now on TV, Lord God, on the internet, God. And I just thank you for your supernatural grace, God. We thank you for Jesus, the gift of Jesus, God. 
We thank you, Father God, for the forgiveness of our sins, God, for any one of us, God, that have forgotten, Lord God, just the joy of salvation. I pray right now, oh, Spirit of the living God, for you to come, Lord God, and for you to just remind them, Father God, of the joy that's attached to salvation. God, we come against any type of thoughts right now, Father God, that's raising themselves against the knowledge of who you are. God, we speak no more in Jesus' name. We speak good thoughts, great thoughts, virtuous thoughts, God. We even speak strength, Lord God, for people to be able to think the right things. God, we know that right now, today, that you're doing something in our mind. We thank you for the mind of Christ that we all have. God, we thank you for the good thoughts, Lord God, that you're flooding into our minds right now, today, and for the rest of the day. We love you. We honor you. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.